All right, our reading this week is going to be in Luke chapter 18. Uh, let's break that chapter down for you into some di digestible chunks for you to work with. Uh, first 14 verses, basically two bar parables, both right. of which deal with the subject of prayer. That's right. All right, then we have that little segment. And I guess we kind of break it out because it doesn't really fit with what goes before or after. 15, 16, 17, where you have... Uh, we have that, that, that section where Jesus wants the children to come to him. And I, right. I think it's tied to the context, bigger picture, uh, but doesn't really tuck in nicely with the prayer section. Then 18, uh, among the more familiar of his parables, going down to verse 30, we have the rich young ruler. Right. And then picking up in verse 31, I, I actually took 31 and combined it all the way down to the end with 43, because really um, you have him taking the uh, apostles aside right. and telling them about what's coming and right. they don't get it. Right. And then you have the blind man right. who does get it. Your right. faith made you well. So so I, I labeled that section, Who Sees? Yeah. Because well, really that kind of goes together. I think that's exactly right. And that's a fantastic way to put it. This is, again, you know, at Jericho this happens. He, this is like the last, this is the turn off the interstate on the way to Jerusalem as he's traveling down. So they're getting really close to Jerusalem and it's time for him to again reckon. And, and it's about, a private conversation with his disciples, make this sure they understand what's about to happen when they arrive at Jerusalem as they're pulling off the interstate to go through Jericho and, and, and go on up into the hills. Yeah, we're kind of getting down to the, close to the last week anyway. That's right, that's right. Chapter 19, that basically begins the next, the last week. So let's talk about what, what folks should look for as they read 18 in terms of, of some kind of connecting thread that runs through the whole section. I, I think I still see Luke working this idea of who's in yeah. and who's out that we have seen over and over again. That's sort of unexpected who will right. be part of the kingdom and who right. will be sitting outside the party, right. so to speak. And that is, to your point, it, it, you know, the, the verses 15 through 17 maybe seem a little out of place, but it's still talking about, you know, this is yes. these are the people of the kingdom of heaven. He's still trying to get people to understand the nature of a kingdom citizen uh, because it's it's not what they, and frankly, we in our religious world have kind of been conditioned in the culture to think or expect. And, and you see that, I think, even... Even in the prayers, mm -hmm. uh, I think, for example, about the, the Pharisee and the public in 1914, right. uh, the underlying lesson there is it's the humble man who is in and not the man who was considered by culture to be righteous. Right. right. Uh, so again, a surprise about who's in and who's out. Never more surprising then, though, when we get to 18 right. and we find out that the rich young ruler right. is out. Because I mean, he had all the credentials. What's that about? He's moral. Uh, you know, he's, he's asked, you know, when, when, when Jesus answered him, or, you know, he says basically keep the law, and, and yet, uh, you know, here's, the young man says, I have. And stop, but think about it. Jesus is agree with him, saying, no, listen, I know about this mistress you're keeping on, on your wife here. Don't tell me that. Jesus doesn't disagree. The man has kept the law, and yet he's still not in. And so, you know, you have this line then about, about you know, basically, getting rid of your wealth, which is not about, we often think about poverty, it's about what's the real organizing principle in your life. And he found that this man maybe had no, just his nature or personality or something, he had no problem being moral, but he did have a problem not being materialistic. Uh, you know, he's going to be interesting when we get to 19 mm -hmm. to compare with Zacchaeus. Well, that's right. Who offers up Correct. half of his wealth Correct. Uh, with no nudging from Jesus at all. So watch for that the next uh, two weeks of reading, how the, these two guys contrast with each other. Hey, comment on verse 20, uh, 27, because uh, there's that question that comes up. I'm talking, sorry, verse 29. Right. Uh, about uh, uh, Jesus promising... Uh, that 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 you're going to get more stuff. Am I missing that? Yeah. No. You're you're there. Verse twenty nine and thirty. Um, yeah. It makes you know. And, and that, those verses certainly have been abused in the religious world, right? You know, have more faith, serve God more wholeheartedly, and you know, you're going to get a better job, better income, better house, whatever. You know, the, the idea is is sacrifice whatever you have to sacrifice in this life, and the more you get, is the more of of um, 
you know, the church and brethren, I think, in this life. It's not you personally. It's the, it's the community of the kingdom on this earth that you get, let alone in the age to come, eternal life. Yeah. And so the issue is not, again, you know, he's telling this man to divest of his earthly riches. The idea that he's challenging Old Testament then and, and then into our own time is that serving God is the guaranteed road to material well-being. Paradoxically, Jesus says, you'll actually get more out of this life if you'll willingly sacrifice what needs to be sacrificed. That's keeping you from the kingdom. But that 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 gain is in the church, other people, um, our shared right. resources, all things in common, no need among them. Um, and once it's a greater security and, and, and a greater joy in life. And then in that last segment, 31 to 43, I think the key to watch for there is this uh, connection between those who see and those who do not see. And an interesting contrast, Jeff, because this time it isn't the Pharisees. Right. Uh, it's not a scribe or one, someone from the high priest. This is the 12 who aren't seeing it yet. And don't forget what the blind man says in verse 38 to your point. Jesus, son of David. Uh, yeah, I had that marked, yeah. Yeah, he, he, the man doesn't just see Jesus as a miracle worker. He sees him as the Messiah. To call him the son of David in that context is to fully claim him as Messiah. The blind man sees. So I think that there are two things that challenge us then in this chapter with some thoughts of application. One of them is the challenge to be sure we see the kingdom as God does. Oh, right. And that we don't become guilty of the same kind of blindness right. that afflicted Jesus' adversaries in this day. And and then secondly, to be willing to ask that question, can I, can I be blind even to stuff in my own life right. that isn't consistent with the will of Jesus? So great points of application to ponder as you spend your week reading through Luke chapter 18. Hope you enjoy your read.